Good morning. <laughs> it is time. If you're watching this in the afternoon, good afternoon. If you're watching the recording, uh, hi. Hi, lovely lady. <laughs> Have you been out for a walk already? Morning. <laughs> okay. We are going to... Yeah, I was going to ask you about your hair. Sorry, I'm just chatting to somebody here. <laughs> Are you glad you went to the hairdressers yesterday? I saw your post. <laughs> Is it looking amazing? <laughs> Are you feeling as light as a feather today? <laughs> oh, hi, Angie. Oh, we'll press ups today then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, with the hair. <laughs> So, and my mum's here as well. Hi, mum. So, we are going to lie on our back. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to <laughs> complete. Let's get it wrong. Um, we're going to lie on our fronts. I feel like a supermodel. Yeah, well, you probably look like one too. <laughs> Yay. You look like one before you had your hair cut. You see? I've got the gift of the gab, me. <laughs> So let's let's lie on your front. See so you, you're there with Angie, two supermodels together. <laughs> I can just see Angie's face now going, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, taking my socks off because my feet get hot. <laughs> Too much information. So let's lie on our fronts. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and when you get there. <laughs> Uh, rest your forehead on your hands. So I'm going to go down there in a minute on the mat. I'm just talking to you whilst you do that. Because <clears throat> I'm aware that when I'm lying on my front, you can't hear me as well as when I'm standing here in front of the screen. That's why I look like I'm just like hanging around. So lying on your front, stretch your legs out and uh, rest your forehead on your hands. And bring your amazing attention to your belly breathing, lower belly, so think all the way down towards your pubic bone, that far down. Um, so imagine for a moment that I'm in the room with you and my hand is on your lumbar spine and when you breathe in your lumbar spine presses up into my hand. So you have this expansion going into the front and the back of the body, imagine there's a balloon in that part of your body and when you breathe in it expands. So it helps open up some space here. Sometimes we get a little bit uh, tucked under or arched in the lower back and we can get a little bit tight in the lower back and we don't have this expansion feeling going on to help the muscles unwind and stop feeling that they're so, that they don't have space to breathe. So this will really help open up the lumbar spine but bring attention to the amazing muscles either side of your lumbar spine, your multifidus muscles, and when you breathe out, the descent helps to strengthen them on the out breath. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna lie down. You carry on. So then bring your attention to the legs, allow them to feel equal on the right and the left side. Let's just move that up away. So you're not leaning, sometimes we have an awareness of more of the right side of the body. If you're right handed, sometimes you feel heavier on that side, maybe you lean on that side a little bit more on your left side, not, not uh, feel as connected. So just notice in your legs, which part of the legs touch the mat and which parts of your leg don't. You might notice the thighs, the front of the thighs on the floor, but you might notice that the shins are off the floor. <coughs> and 
notice your feet, the front of the right foot, does it feel different to the front of your left foot? Then bring your legs together and bend your knees. So you bring the knees together and bring your feet together and let the feet drop over to one side. You'll notice if you're going to the right, your left knee will start to lift off the floor a little bit. But try and keep the feet together so that left knee does lift and then come back to the centre and go to the other side. Come back to centre, switch sides. Your pelvis will move as well. So your hip will come off the floor and switch and switch. Just notice what's happening in the pelvis and in your ribs. So you're shifting the weight from one side, one rib to the other side, the other rib cage. One more on each side. And then come back to centre, take the knees away from each other and bring your heels together. So knees apart and heels touching. So your big toes are away from each other. Now bring your attention to the front of your pelvis, have the pubic bone touching the mat and start to push your feet up to the ceiling so the knees come off the floor a little bit and then bring your knees back down. It's not a huge movement, keep, keep the front of the pelvis on the mat as you lift your knees and bring the knees back down. Two more. And then bring the knees back together. Keep the right leg bent, let the left leg rest down on the floor. So with your right heel, do two little kicks towards your sit bones. Bring the leg down, change sides. Bend the left knee, two kicks. Bring it down, change sides. So two little pulses, and then you release and change sides. So nothing changes on the front of the body. The pelvis stays the same. You're not shifting from side to side. Last one on each side. And then push yourself up onto your forearms. So your body's away from the floor. Your hands are flat and you can push the floor away with your hands. And feel as if your hands and your forearms are pressing down through the ground. As if you're lying on the beach and you're pressing down into the sand. Front of the pelvis stays on the mat. Go back to bending your knee and doing two kicks. Pelvis stays still and keep the heart and the chest bone lifted up between your shoulder blades. So you're not sinking down through the spine. The spine isn't sinking down through the floor. So if my hand was between your shoulder blades, you'd be pressing your chest bone up towards my hand. Looking towards your fingers. One more on each side. This is called the single leg kick, because that's what you're doing. <laughs> and then come back down and just hold it here for a moment. Keep pushing the floor away. Keep the chest bone and the heart lifted. So the rib cage feels as if it's lifting up towards the back of the body. Front of the pelvis touching the floor. Legs are equal. And breathe into your back like you were doing just now. Breathe into the lower back, as if my hand was on your lumbar spine. So it's a little bit trickier now because you're off the floor. One more. And then take the hands out wider, bring the body down and go into a swan dive. So back extension, pushing the floor, hands into the floor, lifting the head, lifting the heart, breathe in and breathe out as you come back down. Every time you lift, take an inhalation. Feel that you're lifting from your hip bones. Now, if your shoulders are lifting up by your ears, keep the elbows bent and just lift and lower without the elbows or the forearms coming off the floor. Reduce the range so it doesn't feel like you have to use a huge amount of effort to get up there. Otherwise, you'd be overworking your neck, your jaw or your shoulders.
So whichever one, whatever position you're in, hold the next one up there. Push the floor away, look over your right shoulder to your right heel. Change sides, swap sides, in. Swap sides, one more on each side. And then come back to center, come back down to the floor. <coughs> so we're gonna do the double leg kick, so bear with me, because there's a lot of talking in this. So you're gonna turn your head to look towards your right shoulder and rest your left cheek on the mat. Your hands come round and rest on your back. They can be linked together, or palm on top of palm. Rest your elbows, bring the legs together, bend the knees, do three kicks, heels towards your hands, bring the legs down, let the hands reach for your feet, turn your head, look in the other direction, bring the head down, rest your hands, rest your elbows, three kicks, heels to your hands, take the legs away, take the hands away, lift your head, turn it, put the head back down, three kicks, rest your elbows, take the hands to the feet when you lift your head, let the shoulder blades hug your spine as you turn the head and put the head back down, rest the elbows, hands are on your back, three kicks, reaching away, last time on each side you turn the head, put the hands back on your lower back, three kicks with your heels, rest your elbows, reach the legs away, reach the hands away, turn the head to the other side, are you keeping up? Bend your knees, three kicks, <laughs> Let the legs reach away, let the hands reach for your feet and hold it here. So your feet can either be off the floor or touching the mat. Let go of your hands, reach for your feet, tuck your chin in, let your shoulder blades hug your spine, and if you've got space, if you haven't, bend your elbows. Take the L arms out wide to the side and take them forward in front of you. So the hands are about an inch off the floor. Take them back out to the side and back out to your legs. So arms can be straight or bent. Back out to the side, back out in front of you. Back out to the side, back to your legs. When you go to your legs, let the shoulders hug your spine. Come back out to the side, go back out in front of you. Last time to the legs, and then collapse. <laughs> Come back into child's pose. Toes together, knees apart, and let your sit bones rest on your heels and let your chest bone Reach forward towards the front of the mat. Head can rest on your hands. Ooh. And then walk the hands up. So a little bit more work on the back muscles. Come over onto your hands and knees. Spread the fingers out so you don't claw at the hands. That will switch off your shoulder muscles. And let your right arm reach forward and your left leg reach back. Lift them both off the floor at the same time. So from a sideways view, so you're trying not to rotate. So your knees facing the floor and your palm of your hand is facing the floor. Come back down, change sides. So the hand that's still on the floor Push the floor away with that hand. You try not to rotate in the ribs so your hips stay equal. Come back down, change sides, push the floor away. Reach along with your little finger and your little toe. Come back down, change sides. <laughs> the last one on each side, you're going to change it slightly. So arm and opposite leg are reaching out, let them move away from each other. So arm out to the side. So arm that's out in front goes out to the side and the leg that be behind you goes out, come back in. Two more, just moving away, coming back in, moving away, coming back in, hands and knee come back down, change sides, lift and move away from the spine. And then sit back, shake out your hands. Ooh, hi. <laughs> so you're going to come back onto the hands and knees, put your hand behind your head, left hand stays on the floor, right hand behind the head, and lift the right elbow to the ceiling and watch it go. Come back down, breathe in as you lift, breathe out as you release. Stay equal on your knees so you're not shifting the weight over onto one side. 
and your eyes follow your elbow. Last one. Change sides. Last one. And then go back into child's pose, rest the wrists. And then roll yourself over onto your back and go into a bridge. So let the arms rest, let your palms turn upwards, let your shoulder blades rest on the floor. Notice your feet for a moment before you go up in the bridge, have you got pressure at the heels? the ball of the big and the little toe and let your toes spread out and lengthen towards the front of the mat. And now let your back flatten, the lumbar spine drops as you start to roll through, rolling up to the top of your spine. Keep the chin tucked in and then roll back down as if you're placing one bone at a time on the mat before you get to your sacrum and your tailbone and then you're ready to roll back up again. So just be aware that when you're in that top position, the tendency is to lift your chin and look behind you. But keep the chin tucked in, so you keep the space in the bones of the neck, and then roll yourself down, placing one bone at a time. Check your toes are nice and long, that they're not bending or grabbing at the floor, and rolling back up, still looking towards your knees, now hold it here and allow your knees and shins to feel as if they're reaching forwards over your toes. As if there's a magnet at the front of your shins and that's pulling forward the bones of your shins. Your shin bone reaching forward. And then come down about an inch. Hold it there. And then come down about another inch. Hold it there. And then another inch. Hold it there. <laughs> And then another inch, hold it there. You've got to tuck under now. Bring your pubic bone to your ribs so your last rib drops down. And then your lumbar spine. And then the rest of the spine. The tailbone drops and you're there. Pick up your right foot. <clears throat> Push the left foot into the floor. You might want to bring your left foot a bit closer in towards you because you're going to lift and lower. So rather than rolling through a bridge, you're going to go straight up and then come back down. Push the left foot into the floor as you lift and lower. Hips lift, hips lower. <clears throat> Last one on that side, you're doing five. And then bring that right foot down. Change sides, lift and lower. <clears throat> and lift and lower. Check your toes are nice and relaxed. And your jaw. And then bring that foot down. <laughs> Take the feet wide. Let both knees drop to the right, come back to centre, change sides, come back to centre, change sides, come back to centre, change sides. What time is it? Come back. Oh, so it's nearly time to go. It's nearly time to go. Last time on each side. And then come back to centre, bring the feet closer together. Allow the lumbar spine to flatten and allow it to arch. Let it drop and let it arch. So just find that movement in your lower back and just allow the head to move as well. You might find that when you arch the back, the chin drops to the chest and when you flatten the back, the chin lifts. So get that rocking movement all the way up and down your back. So the neck and the lumbar spine just having a chat with each other. <laughs> Last one. Last one. Come back to your neutral position. And we're going to finish off with one of my favourite exercises, one of my favourite core exercises. You're going to pick up your right foot and pick up your left foot. Take the hands up to the ceiling. Uh oh. So one arm goes back, I'm going to do my right and my right arm, left leg. So arm and opposite leg reach away and you come back to centre, change sides. So check again that you're not lifting your chin, so I noticed then my chin was lifting a little bit. So you don't want your neck muscles to reduce the strength of your abdominals. So the spine stays long. Now if you want to make it more challenging, you open up the space at the back of your knee. 
so the legs are longer and you'll notice straight away as soon as you do that <laughs> so if you feel that you're holding your breath bend your knee a little bit more so your diaphragm isn't bracing for the rest of your core muscles diaphragm is one of your core muscles and so is your pelvic floor so you're not squeezing anything no squeezing So last time when you get to your left arm, and then hug your knees in. Put your feet back down on the floor. Let your feet notice the edges of your mat, and then let your knees drop in. Like that. <clears throat> and bring your attention, because it's breathing time. That's the quickest 10 minutes, 20 minutes ever. So bring your attention to your pelvic floor and to your diaphragm. So think about them, they are on top of each other, but because they're full of a distance between them, just in your mind's eye, imagine the huge parachute of your diaphragm just resting above the pelvic floor, the circle of the pelvic floor, think of it like that. And allow them to both move together when you breathe. So when you breathe in, they both lower, they both drop down. And when you breathe out, they both lift up, they dome up towards your heart. When you breathe in, they drop, they lower. And when you breathe out, they dome up towards the heart. When you breathe in, they lower. And when you breathe out, they both lift. So in your mind's eye, you're imagining what your pelvic floor and diaphragm are doing together. They have a relationship with each other. Even though there's a bit of a social distancing going on between your diaphragm and your pelvic floor, they're both allowed to move at the same time. Sometimes we lose a connection with our pelvic floors. We just don't, they're just there, don't realize it. And obviously they've been through a lot of stuff. If you've had kids, your pelvic floor's had a bit of a battery. <laughs> if you've ever had anything like that going on. If you've ever had a, have ever been cut, if you've ever had any issues with your bladder or anything like that going on as well. Be kind to your pelvic floor. So with this movement with your breath and the diaphragm, just imagine it in your mind's eye, how they flow together, helps to bring some healthy massage and tissue uh, hydration, like that word, to the muscles and the fascia around that part of your body. So if you're a bit of a stressy person, if you've got a lot going on in your life and you're worried about a lot of stuff, sometimes find that the rear pelvic floor gets a bit tight. And the rear pelvic floor, think about where your sit bones are and where your tailbone is. You tend to squeeze them all together. So allow your sit bones to lengthen let them reach away from each other. Keep your sit bones apart and let your tailbone relax. Let it feel that it's got, it hasn't got care in the world. So two or three more breaths like that, focusing on the diaphragm and the pelvic floor flowing together, moving, just helping each other. And then bring the feet together and roll yourself over onto one side. Rest your head when you get there. <clears throat> and allow your mind for a moment to pay attention to your heartbeat, just noticing that gentle rhythm inside the body. And when you feel ready, use your hands to push yourself up. So that breathing with the pelvic floor on the diaphragm, you can do anyway. You don't have to be lying on the mat. You can do it as you're going around your day, in the supermarket, in your kitchen, in the shower, in the bath, in the garden. 
and you just get to a point where it becomes a natural thing to do. You just get used to it. It's really healthy to keep this moving together. Really, inner inner support. It's like an inner support. It's like a uh, remember those bras, those uh, lifting bras that gave you the cleavage. The Hello Boys advert. Do you remember that? I'll show my age now. So think of that's what you're doing for your pelvic floor and your diaphragm. Keep it going. Thank you. Love you loads. Have a great day. Sun is shining. Get in the garden. Take care. Love you.